Okay, so we're up to three paintings so far. Two done in the studio, um, and that was just to, to get a sense of how the box worked and, and whether I can learn to paint directly, see the image in front of me and then directly paint it, as opposed to very carefully planning, which is what my normal method is. The third one was my first attempt, my first real attempt outside. And although I really enjoyed the experience of just being out there and having that direct communication with nature, at the same time, I found it very, um, a bit frustrating for various reasons. So um, I've gone back to the research part and obviously you can imagine what there is on, on YouTube. There are thousands of things, but I've selected five that I think are kind of interesting and I'd like to talk them through. Not necessarily the, te the, the technique that I would use, but the finish that I want to aspire to. I'll leave all the addresses um, at the end of the video so you can have a look at them in your own time. And then I think it's worthwhile just trawling through for a couple of hours and just seeing how these painters go about doing it. They all do amazing things, um, but they get there in different ways. So we'll have a little look at those together. This is Julian Merrow Smith. He paints out of Provence, does a painting a day, sells them all. He's really successful and really good at what he does. But what always amazes me is this. Look at, look at this approach. Look at his method. It's, I mean, he's incredibly brave. He goes in there with a strong colour. Look where he holds the brush, right down the end. I, I hold mine right up towards the bristles to get my accuracy. But this guy has no fear whatsoever because he knows he'll pull out the lights out of this painting. He's painting light. And I guess in this instance, he's starting with the, with the darks and the shadows. They always end up much more finished than this, as you can probably imagine, but nevertheless, I wanted you to see this, this initial approach to how he would start a plein air landscape. At the end of this painting, just a quick half hour demo, it looks like this, so you can really see how he's got the atmosphere going. This is more typical of his work, which I love, and this is one of his great still lives. Look at that bread. This is a completely different approach this guy's name is Mark D'Alessio, and I love watching him work. You get to see the palette a lot. You get to see him actually paint in this very calm and deliberate way. And just listening to his voice, it's almost like being in a trance. He, he's, he's incredibly purposeful, but does it in a, a really measured and experienced way. I, I, I just think he's, he's well worth watching. The videos go on for about an hour or two as well. They're wonderful. And that's the final painting. Really lovely. This is Jessica Henry. Um, she's done loads of videos now, but I think this was probably one of her first. Um, she wasn't really used to the camera and all that sort of stuff, but she's sort of in between these last two. Her work never gets too detailed. Again, you can see where she's holding the brush, um, but she's friendly and approachable and knowledgeable about what she's doing. She gets straight on very quickly to the colors. These are done in about half an hour, 40 minutes. Um, never gets too detailed, and the result is always really lovely. I mean, I, I love what she's done there. Her camera work uh, is about as bad as mine, but uh, other than that, I think that's a terrific piece of work in half an hour. And this is Sean Wallace. He has a, a real no-nonsense approach to painting. He gets stuck in pretty quickly outside. Again, you can see that similar approach to the very first one I showed you. Soon he gets into the painting. He's chosen a subject which has got a lot of structure to it, so I'm already liking that. And then he goes inside and carries on with a palette knife and uh, just gives that painting a lot more body and texture. And there's the final piece. Really good work, I think. And you've got to see this guy paint. His mountains and the subtlety of his colours are just sensational. And uh, he's brave enough to take on these massive epic landscapes which a lot of people would be very nervous of but he's got a really good skill at, at promoting depth in his paintings and um, they end up looking like that and he does it out of a very small kit as you can see there and I had to slip in this guy um, he's a wonderful painter but he also does this G'day. I'm Andy Dawson welcome to my studio See, that's the other thing I need to work on is uh, getting myself a catchphrase. Look how he paints clouds. He has a, a real mastery of this flat-ended brush. He starts off with a palette knife really loosely and he, he finesses with this. I think he's a brilliant painter. Well, I hope that was helpful. 
I, I, it, it's given me some ideas, but it's, most of all, it's given me some inspiration to go out there and do what I have to do. Um, some of you have sent me some questions about color, color mixing, editing, and depth. And so um, I'm going to do another painting for the next video, just, just to a quick one. And then I'm going to go through a series of greens, because greens are something that people have always said to me, oh, I really struggle with greens. And, and, I've, and I've been um, putting together a little menu of how you get your, your good greens, certainly for this landscape, and then you can adapt it for the landscape you're in. And then we'll talk about how to, how to bring a painting forward and push a painting back. Um, with regard to depth. Anyway, I hope that was interesting. It, it, I think it's always good to stop every so often, step, step away from the painting and, and look at what you're doing, but also look at what other people are doing as well. That's why in, in the classroom, we always say, get up, walk around the studio, look at what everybody else is doing. Anyway, um, keep going. I'm going to keep going till I get this right. Speak to you next time.